Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And this picture says everything. Mm -hmm. This picture says everything that we had suspected for years. Uh, that Bob Iger was not happy with Bob Chapek. Yeah, no. Well, the story now is that he's the one that wanted to push it through earlier. But yeah, this was after they, the press conference after they announced that they were switching CEOs. Yes. And Bob Iger looks like someone kicked his dog. And Bob Chapek looks like, oh shit. Yeah, and it, this was sort of the beginning of the downward spiral of Disney. Uh, just to tell you where things were at right now, Disney's stock uh, hit a 52-week low. It was like like $90. That's almost what it was when the pandemic hit. Yeah, um, and uh, it's probably going to get worse because I don't think they have any major, major blockbusters mm -hmm. coming up anytime soon. And if uh, you know the number of people are going to quit, Disney Plus that they're projecting uh, over Cricket in India, of all things, I think they're going to take a hit there too. But yeah, um, the word on the street is that Bob Iger regrets uh, passing the baton to Bob Chapek, yep. and uh, it's become quite the uh, quite the mess. It was on Business Insider. Mm -hmm. Former Disney CEO Bob Iger battled the company's board over succession. Insiders say and was unhappy about the transition of power to Bob Chapek, and and we we guessed. At this, I mean, it was out of left field. Mm -hmm. There were no succession plans. I think the board was actually kind of unhappy because they're like, "Hey, Bob, you're you're leaving." They kept right. extending his contract. Well, that's some of the people he wanted to put in, like Stags and stuff, left. They left. Kevin you Mayer, know, the Disney well, Plus Well, Kevin Mayer left after they made Chapek uh, a CEO. I would. But Stags was the one they were thinking was going to get it. Yeah. And then he left ahead of it. And then Stags and Mayer, they were both candidates to be the CEO, and they went and formed their own mm -hmm. company. And they got a bunch of venture capital, and they're buying up everything now. They but weren't bought, they the ones that got Coco Melon? They got Coco Melon. Yeah. yeah. Candle, Candle Media or whatever mm -hmm. it is. Yeah. So they became a Disney competitor. Um, and uh, so here we are with Disney in the situation it's in, and it's the blame game. And uh, we'll see where it goes. But we'll, we'll read a little bit of this article. And um, I'm sorry, I'm laughing. Was the memo you had to wear the same outfit that day? Apparently. That's the, that's the Disney CEO uniform. We have to um, put a unified front for the camera. Wear the same clothes. Yeah, the only way you can tell them apart is one has hair and one doesn't, mm, I yeah, guess. That, I don't that's, know. Yeah. Anyway, before we get into it any further, this daily dose of dismal Disney, please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants, guys, over 272,000 subs. Ooh. Thank you so much for the support. Uh, we'd you know, like to get to 300. We'd like to get to 300. We just like, I don't know what's going on. It's like we just. People hate us. That's probably what it they is. They just absolutely when hate us. When you're in the middle, us. everybody hates you. Everybody hates us. Everybody hates clownfish. That's okay. We exist just to make you angry. Somehow we know nothing but are the cause of everything at the same time. I know, right? Um, anyway, so yeah, you did an article on it. Um, Bob Iger regrets the choice of Bob Chapek as his successor. So do a lot of Disney mm -hmm. fans. Oh, yes. A lot of Disney fans. Um, so this came from Business Insider originally. Mm -hmm. They said when Bob Iger, wow, yeah, <laughs> Disney stock, 91.9. Ouch. When Bob Iger stepped down as Disney CEO, he planned to mentor Bob right. Chapek through a two-year handoff. He wanted to, he, I guess, he wanted to do more of the creative stuff. He was tired on the business stuff. So my understanding is that he wanted to let uh, Chapek take over as CEO um, but he wanted to be, it wanted to be like a two year process so that when yeah. he was leaving on his own terms at the end of 2021, he had Chapek up to speed. But that's not what happened. No. He basically became the CEO. Now, you remember that after Chapek became CEO, you never heard from him at first. Remember, Iger was the one you saw uh, at the yeah. investor calls. Iger's the one calling the governor of California about the shutdowns. Iger's the one you kept seeing in the media, and people are like, where's Chapek? Yeah. Well, Iger was trying to use his power to keep, you know, in front of it. And then they had to put Shay back in at some point. Yeah. And uh, it, it sounds like it's quite a mess at Disney that we have different factions mm -hmm. kind of fighting each other. You've got Chapek's uh, regime and then uh, Iger's regime. And um, yeah, so the Disney board wanted to make Chapek the COO before yes. elevating him to CEO. Right. Which... That's normally in a lot of companies. That's how it's done. You kind of work your way because he was in charge of the parks. He wasn't. He wasn't C level. I mean, mm -hmm. he was. He was the guy in charge, basically the middle manager in charge of the theme parks, and he was carrying out whatever Iger told him to do. Basically, and I think what Iger wanted to do was they wanted. He wanted to be more at the creative end of it. He said yeah. they didn't want. He's tired of the day to day business stuff. 
So I think he wanted to let Chapek the CEO stuff, so Chapek could take over the business stuff and he'd mentor him. The board wanted him to be chief operational officer until he could be, then he could get a taste for it, learn the, the ropes. Kind of they were on the same page then, basically. Yeah. But then somehow it went from that to he's CEO all of a sudden. Uh, yeah, yeah. Iger disagreed with many of Chapek's moves and lobbied the board to reinforce yes. his authority. We saw um, that often. They said he thought he was going to spend his last year, Iger was going to spend his last year basically saying goodbye, doing the farewell tour, and it wound up being a cluster. As soon as COVID hit, if you guys remember, as soon yeah. as COVID hit, they're like, wow, this COVID thing's going to cause uh, all kinds of problems for the parks. Um, yeah, so see you, Bob, and here's new Bob. Well, I think what happened was, here's my opinion, I think Bob Chapek had the restructuring the company idea Yeah. and to go to that way, and, and the board saw that as an opportunity. Yeah, and I think that that's why Chapek got put in a CEO sooner than he should have. Um, yeah, because he was trying to you know restructure to save money, but it's also it saved the company though. It, it did. I mean, it did in the long run. Because look, they got lucky though. If it wasn't for Disney Plus, right? Which that was Iger. That was Iger, and that was Kevin Mayer. Mm -hmm. Kevin Mayer, they thought was going to be the the replacement for Iger. Right. If it wasn't for, for Disney Plus being ready to go, they would have been screwed. If they had waited six months, can you imagine if they had waited six months to launch Disney Plus? Mm -hmm, they, they launched in November of 2019, and the pandemic shut everything down in um, March of 2020. Yeah. So the only thing they had was their shop Disney and Disney Plus, and there are other companies that are outside related. Um, the parks that were their main moneymaker got locked down. And because they had restructured the company during the pandemic, that actually kept the company going. Now, unfortunately, that puts parks as secondary, and parks are just a big money sink, and they're, they're there just to suck the money out of you and the life out of you and any enthusiasm you have for the parks out of you. But if they hadn't restructured the company, we'd be in a lot, they'd be in a lot more trouble now. That is true. So the transition didn't roll out the way Iger planned, and the, uh, he remains unhappy with how it was handled, said one person closely familiar with his thinking. Uh, they said Disney is normally known for superb marketing and textbook public relations, but they talked about how with COVID, just everything just blew up. Yeah, and I will tell you, and people get pissed when you say this, we were when we were at the parks, People, there were some people, a lot of cast members that were very nice and, and like normal, mm. but there we did see a lot of really rude ones. Like yeah. I know we were on Rise of the Resistance. There was a couple cast members on that. They were just the, the, flat out being bitchy. I mean, just, there was no reason. And it was like in the morning. So it wasn't even, was they'd been there all day. No reason to be acting the way they were acting. I mean, like flat out rude, like really, really rude. And I get it. You, you deal with assholes all day. I get it. But there's definitely a, um, a marked difference in the way that, the, that some of the cast members behave now compared to the way how they behave before. Unfortunately, it's, I mean, it, it paints everybody in a bad picture, and it's not that many, but it, you're seeing it where you didn't see it before. Yeah, but I mean, you know, the flip side of that is why should they give a shit when the company didn't give a shit about them? Yeah, as, as soon no, as, that's true. And they don't pay very well. No, they're not paid very well to begin with. And, and I'm sure they get a lot of Karens and Kyle yeah. shit. Oh, yeah, yeah. No but, offense, Karen's Kyle's. But of course, you know, they have to bring up, oh, the politics. Bob Iger doesn't agree with Bob Chapek's uh, politics or trying well, to avoid politics. Well, that must not be the case because now Chapek's doubling down on what Iger would have done. Yeah. So, I mean, this is like, I mean, we keep getting this story, too. And I don't, look, I mean, this might be wishful thinking on the part of some people. A lot of people keep uh, bringing up that they think that Bob Chapek is going to make the company apolitical. I have seen nothing to indicate. Well, it's not like he was that going is. to at first. And then when he didn't do anything, he got called out for the yeah. Florida bill. And then he went completely off the deep end the other way. They started this new inclusion key. They have uh, gone be above and beyond. They've gotten rid of people that were there and replaced them with um, people who were known to be part of, like, the vaccine mandate committees and things oh, yeah, like that. Yeah. So, no, in our, from where we're sitting at, it does not seem to be the case. No, I mean, we could be wrong. Um, I hope we are. But uh, I would like to see it go apolitical. But, I mean, look, they've already lost Reedy Creek uh -huh. uh, over over this nonsense. I mean, this whole thing is, is just batshit. I mean, look, Chapek, regardless of, of what, how you feel, it, it's been messy and... He's cost Disney a lot, a mm -hmm. lot of goodwill. Now, to be fair, though, a lot of the things that, you know, he gets blamed for, they were on, that was Iger. They were on Iger's watch, Iger yeah. did it. It just didn't trickle down the line until he was in charge. Like, Genie Plus and all that, that was all Iger. Mm-hmm. Um, so they said that uh, 
the share price fell by more than two percent the day of the announcement, and we're we're right oh, we're back. Way to back. Where, yeah, yeah. We're back there. Um, they talk about how Iger basically boosted the stock. Basically, Iger's Iger's plan was buy as much as they will let me buy, mm-hmm. and that's what Disney did. And he overspent on Fox. He I'm overspent sorry. on Fox. Fox was like the most worthless acquisition of, and they, he spent the most on Fox and got the least for it. Well, yeah, and then all they're gonna do is just take everything that, that Fox had and, and reboot it. Or try to milk it, and 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 they don't do it, like we see with Star Wars, other things. They don't they don't fundamentally understand the franchises usually, and they ruin mm. them. Yeah, yeah, they don't. They basically just buy stuff, but they don't know what to do with it. It's they like, try, but then they it doesn't work. This reminds me of um, years ago. I worked for a commercial printer in California, and the, the, it was a husband and wife, and uh, he was from Germany actually, but he was an investment banker, mm-hmm. and he was he was good you know, at banking and numbers, and he understood that. Well, he bought a, a commercial printing business as, like, something to piddle around with in his retirement, but he didn't fundamentally understand how any of this stuff worked. Mm-hmm. Like, he bought it, he could afford it, um, and he could keep it running because he had money from his other, but he did not understand how the printing business worked. And that's kind of Disney. Like, they buy this shit, but they don't understand how a lot of it works. So they try to Disneyfy mm-hmm. their acquisitions, and then a lot of times they they rip the heart out of. I mean, the Muppets. Like Home Alone. Yeah, Home Muppet, Alone. Yeah, the Muppets. One of the most egregious examples. Like they do not know what to do mm-hmm. with the Muppets at all, at all. And um, you need Jim Henson. You need you know the the OG. Well, you can't get Jim Henson. You I'm can't. Sorry. Yeah, I know. But I'm just unless saying, you got a Ouija board and a couple mediums, you're not. You're not. But I'm just saying, He's like, not helping. I think the Muppets basically died when Jim Henson passed away because his kids don't care about the Muppets, you know? Wouldn't that be an interesting company? Like, oh, it's okay. We, well, well, so-and-so died. doesn't matter. We've got five mediums and a Ouija board. We talk to him all the time. Oh, my God. He's still, be... running, he's still running the company from beyond. I that go... would be a movie or a show or a comic book. Oh, freaking, freaking Disney would hate it if they brought the ghost of Walt back, though. Yeah, he like, imagine he'd be like, he'd... What, though? well, he would be very, very uh, uh, opposite politically. I'm yeah, sure. he would be. He would There's, be. He was all the communists. We need to get rid of the communists. Why are all these commies in my company? <laughs> yeah. Bob, what are you doing? Uh, anyway, um, they said he got tired of the things he had to do. Uh, Iger's public assertion power came as a slap in the face to Chapek. Well, yeah, because he wouldn't let him do his job. He's CEO, but yeah. he wasn't allowed to do anything. And I remember we did videos on it. We're like... Where the hell is Bob Chapek? Yeah, pretty much. It was like it was like nothing changed. Um, so they talked about all the successors and Kevin Mayer leaving and all that, and they basically said it's it's a huge failure. It's a it's a black mark on Bob Iger's legacy that he basically. That's what he's mad about because 15 yeah. years he was like the Hollywood guy, Mr. Charisma, and then you put Chapek in, and then he screws up with Scarlett Johansson, and then yeah. there was the Peter Rice thing, and then there was the the Florida you know ed- parent right and education bill. And you know Disney fans on both sides are up in arms. Mm-hmm. I mean everybody's pissed oh most off everybody at, wants Chapek out. Yeah, everybody's pissed off at Disney at Chapek and the cheapening of of Disney. And then Chapek was um, known as Chapek before he was yeah. made CEO. So when he was made CEO, people were not happy. Because like anybody but Bob Chapek, because they already knew where it was going to go, and we're starting to see that. Um, but I will say, and I, to be fair, Iger did initiate a lot of the things that they're blaming Chapek for, like the Genie Plus and things like that. That was that was under Iger's watch. The whole not paying people, you know, fairly and mm-hmm. all that crap. He's even got a record. Well, I should have done something about that sooner. But it was under his watch that a lot of that stuff happened. But um, Chapek gets blamed for it. He said the morale is described as terrible among many content side that. executives at the company. I mean, they got rid of Peter Rice. Mm-hmm. You know, he's just out the damn door. Um, Wall Street's given Chapek the benefit of a doubt for now. Uh, are they? Well, they are, they are really? for now, but if it stays like this, it's not. they're not going up. Right, right. Um, so they said that uh, Iger continues to voice his regrets. He said he didn't know that Chapek was such a novice when it came to handling complex issues like talent management. In political battles. The, the guy only had to deal with the theme parks. Yeah, but you didn't read the rest. Chapek is arrogant and uninterested in other people's opinions. And Iger isn't? Yeah, that, you know, to be fair, yeah. Chapek Defender says he has made bold moves in restructuring Disney and has led uh, huge capital spending projects well, in the, parks. Well, no, those were already planned. Actually, they got cut back. Yeah. They did they, get there was back. a lot of these things that are going to be done. Um, that's arguable because they were under Iger that they got approved, but they cut them back. Like they were going to have that that new lodge, 
Lakeside Lodge, mm. it got cut back. And then they cut back a bunch of the stuff that, that was going to be put in at Epcot. So now they're scrambling to get that, that spine area finished in some way because it's half open. And, I mean, it's all con construction walls. They cut that back. They've cut they, they've cut back a lot of things. And, you know, the pandemic was part of it. But then they were hitting record profits again. And they were up in profits again. They could have re put the money back into the parks. But now they restructured parks on top of their priority. But they sure as hell have no problem taking more money from the guests. I said that he's writing a book now. Yeah, Iger's another writing one. another book. Is it The Ride of a Lifetime, like part two? Oh, no, this is about leadership in times of crisis. Well, how would he know? How would he know? He was, he was kind of uh, booted from... Anyway, uh, it, it sounds to me like he's basically just trying to save his legacy because I think to him, it's like, well, I put Chapek in. People hate Chapek. Well, he's in 15 years of growth to go like that. Oh, yeah. Just but that's not away. just on JPEG. That's the pandemic and, and the board as well. But yeah. yeah, I mean, I get where he's coming from. But he also overspent on Fox. And they brought that up too. I think, was it um, Elizabeth Warren even called them out about the fact that they had all these this money that they were spending on stuff and they were giving out dividends and all this shit and they could have been saving that money so the company would have been in a better place if something happened. They kept acting like nothing was you know ever was going to take them down. Um, and that was all under Iger. Yeah, I mean, basically, Iger set the dominoes up, mm -hmm. and and Chapek knocked them over. But the way they're getting the what they're getting the most attention for Disney besides the parks is Star Wars and Marvel and that and Pixar. I mean, they're all screwing them up right and left. People are getting tired of it, but that was under Iger's acquisition. And Iger actually said he thought people were getting burned out, brand fatigue on these things. And as soon as he was gone, Chapek tripled down on it. Iger also said that uh, they were going to open Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. Yes. And and they didn't need to advertise it That's at all. True. People were just going to flock to it because it's, it's Star, Star Wars. Star Wars, yes. Yeah. And he was the one, apparently, that greenlit taking the classic trilogy from Ga Galaxy's Edge yeah. and making it, you know, Disney's trilogy. So here's the thing. Like, he actually got out at a good time because now you can blame Chapek for the That's what he's doing. He's just of everything. Like, yeah, that's his book's going to be I think it was like, a perfect storm of bad decisions from Iger, Chapek's bad decisions, and the pandemic. And I think this all came together. And it just... It just you know, and Chapek didn't help himself because he kept making dumb decisions after oh, he was yeah. in there. But I don't think it was all his fault. I think it was a. I think he just happened to be the one that got stuck there when everything came down at once. And now he's getting blamed for everything. And some of it is his fault, and a lot of it isn't his fault. At the end of the day, all that is going to matter is the stock, and uh, you know if if Disney is making money, and um, we'll, we'll see how the next investor call goes. Uh, I think. You know, the luster's kind of wearing off mm -hmm. at Disney Plus, too. People are so fed up with the parks, too. You're getting less for far more oh, God, uh, yeah. money, and, and it's just not It's, it's just not. not. Working. It's Disney, just not. Dis Disney, it's just not. It's just not what it was. Oh, I just call it Disney. It's just not. Does not. Does not. All right, we're going to wrap it up. Yep. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye. Now he's just tasty, delicious, rotten flesh meat, which I can consume. Don't read into it too much. Just like our museum, the cafe, it's open and brewed through it, eager to serve. I don't think this was in the show. No, run, 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 run. Oh, oh you got splatted. No. Oh, wait, oh, wait, oh she was begging and what? you kicked her in the face. I don't care. Hey, guys, Squid King here, and today we're in a... Not girl boss, not girl boss at all. She is not a material girl. She is not. Oh, it's Christmas time here in your mom. Nobody wants to join your mom. What? Like I can't even cook kid cuisine right. I would last about two minutes with Gordon Ramsay. What? Where is he? He's hiding. He's hiding from you. He better. Oh my God, you got the ax. Walker, does this look like Steven Universe? Let me punch him. Well, I'm just here for the wax. Get in the dirt. Well, that was a combination of events I probably shouldn't have put together. Anyways, let's open this bottle to Chica Pinata. Is that official? Oh, no. There's a bootleg. Hello. Ooh, I'm sorry. Hey guys, it's Diamond Tool. Let's make a farm. Like and subscribe and buy my merch. I mean, while you're here, you guys should like really like and subscribe and buy our merch, all of which we have. <laughs> that is true. Can't run him carrying trash. And you can get away with one F bomb per PG 13 movie. Oh, I wish I'd yeah. known that sooner. Yeah. All right, so we're going to wrap this effort up. Yes. <laughs>